The calendar spread combines a short call at a near-term maturity with a long call at a longer maturity. And this calendar spread is not a volatility strategy. It is a neutral strategy. It's going to profit if the stock remains range-bound over the near-term maturity. And it's going to experience a loss if the stock moves dramatically in either the downside or the upside. My previous video illustrated the straddle, which I have stylistically over here on the left, where the profit is in solid purple. And we call that straddle a volatility strategy. And you can see here, it experiences maximum loss if the stock price doesn't move very much. And on the other hand, the straddle expresses a view. It makes a bet that the stock will either move up, hopefully dramatically, or if it drops also dramatically, there's a profit. So the straddle is non-directional. There's not a directional bias, but it is a volatility trade because it wants to see great movement either up or down to get the profit. And its opposite in a way is the calendar spread that I'll show you now. And here I've got its profit plot in solid purple where you can see the situation is the opposite. We start at $20 here, just like I have in the previous videos. And the maximum profit here occurs if the stock doesn't move very much, if it's basically range bound or very little volatility. So we can call this calendar strat a neutral strategy, or I think you can call it a range bound strategy. It's gonna profit here if there's no movement and it's going to lose if there's a, either a drop or an increase in the stock price. So I'll show you the calendar spread with calls here that starts with a short call. So that's writing a call and you'll notice I have a maturity here. T usually denotes maturity on these options of 0.25 years or three months. And we're writing the call and the price is $1.29 of the premium. If we're writing the call, then this is a net credit. That's cash inflow or we say we pocket the premium. I've priced with the Black Shoals here, so it's consistent with an implied volatility of 30%. And we've got our typical profit plot here. Flat segment is the premium and an inflex at the strike price of $20. Okay, so that's just the short call or the call that we've written. And we, to make it a calendar spread, we add a long call. So we've written a call and we buy another call. What makes it a calendar spread is that the long call has a longer maturity. In my case, whereas the short call is three months and the long call is one year, we could have different variations would give us different leverage here on the bet. We could have a, a short call three months and purchase a call of six months would also be a calendar spread. But the basic bet here is that over the next, over the time period here for the short call, which is in this case three months, it's basically a bet that the stock price won't be moving very much. If, if the stock price is range bound over the period of the maturity for the short call, then we will profit on the calendar spread. Now, what I don't have for the long call is the typical profit diagram. And it's because we have different maturities here and all of the other option trades that we've been looking at, the maturities have all matched. So we could always do the same sort of profit diagram where we have that same formula, the profit equals the payoff plus or minus the premium. And that's the, that's the net, uh, debit if we pay for the option and it's a net credit if we write the option, right? That that profit equation characterizes here the short call. However, the situation here is that if we initiate this calendar spread and then we go forward to, let's say forward to, I'm gonna just say plus 0.25 to indicate plus three months forward in time, our short call then expires. So our counterparty will either exercise or not. And then where will we be with the long call? Well, we will still be holding the long call, but it will have nine months remaining maturity instead of the one year that we started. So the long call 
it just experienced a, a time decay of three months or a three month shortening on its maturity, but will still have a long call that has nine more months until expiration. So for the profit diagram, what we do here is we just value that long call at that point in time in three months. We value it, which you can see is the same thing as assuming that we sell that long call at that point in time. So if in three months we're holding a long call where it now will then have, right, nine month maturity, we then sell the long call and then our profit would be, we can say instead of payoff, we could say fair market value if we sell and then subtract the premium we pay, that's our profit. And that's why we get the curve a linear line here because at that point in time in three months, this long call will have both intrinsic value and time value. And it's the time value mon money that gives it the, the curvilinear shape. So this calendar spread will, by definition, have a cost. Under my assumptions here, you can see we pocket the premium of $1.29 on the short call um, with strike of 20 where it inflects. And I'm writing a long call with the same strike price. So all of the things are equal, but this just has a longer maturity than you can see. The calendar spread has to incur a, a net debit. It has to incur a cost to us because the call that we're buying has a longer maturity. And are my assumptions, it's actually $2.75 such that the net debit, we could say, or cash outflow or cost of this calendar spread is $1.46. Although, if we are successful in express, if the if our view is realized or manifest, we'll be here at the peak of eighty nine cents. So as usual, we take those profit plots and combine them in solid purple, and we get the profit plot for the calendar spread that implicitly assumes in th this is a view in three months and right this view is informed by the maturity of the short call so it's in three months so i'll just put that here s plus 0 0.25 and ideally we're, uh, ideally the stock stays at 20 that's our best outcome and so in th this is the profit view in three months and for the long call, again, it imagines that we sell this long call in three months when the long call has nine months remaining to expiration. So how did I get the 89 cents? Well, we were going out three months and we're imagining that that stock price is $20. And what's our profit? Well, we have the short call that we wrote, and I'll just denote that with a negative C, pretty typical, where we collected the $1.29 in premium for the short call, but at $20 stock, stock price, that's and the strike price is 20, our counterparty will not be exercising, it will have zero intrinsic value. And so the premium that we collected, since there's no payoff, also will be our profit on the short call. How about the long call? Well, I'll denote that positive C. And for that long call, you may recall, we needed to pay $2.75 for it when it had one year maturity. Back when we started three months ago, strike at the money, long call, one year maturity, strike of 20, stock price of 20. Go forward three months, the stock price is the same. So actually, the only thing that's changed is the maturity in the long call. And it happens to have a value here of $2.35. You can't see that, but you can download the spreadsheet where you see I just applied the Black Scholes Merton. And so the only thing that changed for the long call, as I keep saying, is what we call time decay. We lost three months on the time due uh, expiration and so that reduces the call. So the call that we paid for, the value of the call, we we paid two dollars and seventy five cents. It's now worth only two dollars and thirty five cents. It's still at the money, but now we only have nine months left. So the value needs to go down if nothing else changes. And so you can see that is a loss here of forty cents just on the time decay under this optimal scenario where the stock price doesn't change. We have time to can the long call, which offsets here that one that dollar twenty nine 
for the 89 cent profit. And that's as good as it gets on the calendar spread. You can take a look in the spreadsheet and see the other scenarios. So the reason we're reducing here on this side is that the long call that we're holding is going up in value because here at 20, that long call has zero intrinsic value, but it's increasing here non-linearly, the long call, as the future stock price goes higher. So this now we have, we're in positive territory with intrinsic value on the long call. However, also, on the other hand, the short call that we wrote now also will have intrinsic value. So our counterparty is going to exercise, and you can see that has a linear, typical linear shape on the written call. And so this written call is actually overwhelming here, the long call, and pulling us down here into a loss. And over here on the left, the uh, short call that we wrote will not get exercised, so the 129 is unchanged. And you can see we're just pulled down here on the long call that we hold because it becomes out of the money over here. So because this flat line, these are basically equidistant here and, and pulling this down into a loss on the counter spread with calls. So I can also do a calendar spread with put. You can download the spreadsheet if you want to take a look at that, but very similar shape. And then finally, on this spreadsheet, I have a butterfly spread with call because it's also a neutral strategy. And the idea with the butter butterfly strategy is we have a long call here at uh, K1 is the lower strike price. As you can see, it inflects here at 18. So we purchase a call with a lower strike price. We purchase a call with a higher strike price. I've got 22. You can see the premium here is less. And then we short. We write two calls typically right about in the middle, right? So you can see in terms of strike prices here, we're long a call at 18, long a call at 22, and offset the two calls that were long, we write two calls. So this is two times right here in the middle at $20. At $20. Uh, $20. And this is how going, this butterfly spread is also going to have a cost to us because the um, long call here at 18 is. Uh, we purchased that. That's already $2 in the money. So it's $3.21. This 22, this long call at strike of 22 is out of the money, but it still costs us $1.13. And then we have uh, two short calls that we write at $1.99. Each, so times two, and that nets out to negative 37 cents that we incur to, to put on this butterfly spread with calls that involves four calls you can see. And the combined profit for that butterfly spread is in purple. And you can see it's a, not a volatility strategy as well. Just like, just like with the calendar spread, uh, Profit here if the stock is range bound and modest losses on the upward downside. So that's the butterfly spread um, in, in, this, in a similar category as the calendar spread. And if this video was helpful, then please subscribe to the channel and uh, we'll make sure you get updates. I do about two videos a week. Thank you.